You're listening to Craig Talk, a ministry of 50 shades of grace. Everybody's got a story. I'm guessing like me, you've been hurt before. But what if I told you there was more to this life than being stuck in the hurt and sin of your past? Hey, we all have crud, but it's how we deal with it that makes all the difference. Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Baptist Church. We thank you for your generous gift, which allows us to share hope and continue to help with people deal with the crud in their lives. So thank you. We appreciate it so much. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Crud Talk. I'm Sonia Bruner. How you doing? So I got this message for my website and I'm I just have to say I'm really blessed by Jesus and how he's working in my life and in other people's hearts see if you can relate to anything that this lady has shared hi Sonia I just got done watching your story and I have to say that I was blown away by all that you've had to suffer when you were young a little bit about my story I'm 38 years old and I have four children and a wonderful husband when I was a teenager, I was introduced to sex by an older friend of my sister's. So needless to say, I was sexually active as a teen. I wasn't abused. I didn't have anyone forcing me. I just chose to have sex with a bunch of different guys. It made me feel powerful and sexy to have that kind of power over a guy. I haven't had to deal with anything like what you've gone through. I really never thought about having issues myself, but then your words washed over me people who should have known better but didn't do better by me and everything became clear I never had the attention from my father I wanted it but he never gave it to me he was always working and didn't seem to notice me he acted like I was an inconvenience and I knew that he didn't like me I remember one time he said Livy there are only two kinds of girls in this world girls who are pretty and girls who are smart enough to know that they aren't He told me that guys would only want one thing from someone like me. I was 14, 14 years old. I hated him for what he said to me that day. I never forgot it. My own father didn't even think I was good enough for boys to respect me. It was after that that I got introduced to sex and how to get a guy to like me. I never made the connection before until I was watching your story. I wanted to be loved so badly that I slept with any guy that paid me attention. And my dad was right. They never did want to be with me. They wanted sex. That's it. And I freely gave that away because I convinced myself that they must have some kind of feelings for me because they kept coming around. I met my husband at a concert and we fell in love. He's the only one that ever saw me for me. We have a good marriage, but there have been some struggles, not from him, but because of me. Now I understand why. I had kids quickly after we got married because I needed to be loved. Kids love you unconditionally. Don't get me wrong. I'm thankful to be a mom and to have them in my life. I love my kids with all I have, but I still feel empty sometimes. And that makes me sad because my husband and kids mean everything to me. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm going to try. I feel like no matter how hard I try or what I do, no one will ever truly love me. I feel like I'm always chasing love and having to be good enough or do something really nice for someone in order for them to love me. Something about me is not good enough. Your story, Sonia, I'm crying right now because I know that I was supposed to hear your words today. I've never been religious and I've only went to church a few times in my life. I started thinking if Jesus can forgive her and she can forgive the ones that hurt her, maybe there is hope for me. I want to be the best wife and mom I can be. I know that this crud that you call it has paralyzed me from becoming the kind of woman I want to be. I prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me and asked him to help me deal with my crud. My next step is going to be to go to counseling. I think I need to. I called my husband to tell him what happened and he's been crying happy tears because this was, this has hurt him and he's been worried about me. He said that he knew there was deep hurt, but he didn't know what to do or how to help me. He said that he loved me and that he'd do anything that I needed him to do to work through this. How can I thank you for what you've done for me and my family? I don't know if you understand how much you've helped me and so many others with your story. You don't judge anyone, but you tell us about what Jesus has done for you. You make us deal with our crud so we can get past it. That's what I'm praying for. I feel different. I feel like I've been released from years of guilt and hurt about my dad. I know that I have more crud to deal with, but I'm not afraid to deal with it now. I know I can. You help me to believe in myself. 
thank you and God bless you, Sonia. Oh my goodness, what an awesome, encouraging letter that is on so many levels. Oh my goodness, I can relate to so many things that she said, right? I love the quote where she says, I feel like no matter how hard I try or what I do, no one will ever truly love me. I feel like I'm always chasing love and having to be good enough or do something really nice for someone in order for them to love me. Something about me is not good enough. (sighs) Yep. I feel like I'm always chasing it, always chasing it. So many of us have had people in our lives who should have known better, but didn't do better by us. And sometimes we've been the one that knew better, but didn't do better. Love, we desperately want it. In fact, we'll do anything to get it. That's the common thread that holds us all together. We all want to be loved. Jesus is love. It's his love that we crave. The only thing that can fill that void completely. Everything else is just temporary. So some of my thoughts, dads, be careful what you say to your daughters. You are Jesus with flesh on. Do you get that? You're the Jesus with skin on to love and protect and care for your girls. Show her how much she's valued. Show her that she can and will make great choices because she has you and Jesus and moms too. I feel like we dumb it down for girls, but we need to speak as if it were so until it is so. Can you imagine what a difference it would make to start speaking you can and you will to your girls and to the boys instead of always assuming that they will do something bad? Hey, listen, if they do make mistakes, then you and I can deal with it if it happens. But automatically speaking it out into the world that they will do something wrong isn't a wise use of our use of our words speaking affirmative words to our girls is critical in their development my other thought about what she said was not all guys will want one thing from a girl we need to be really careful that we don't offer generalizations and the truth is god has a plan and when we do life his way it protects us Lots of girls will sleep with guys because they want to be loved. They mistake the affection and the emotions of sex with being loved. I heard some women recently talking about those kind of girls. (laughs) It was all I could do to not go over to their table and say, oh, were you talking about me? Because I am one of those girls. Please don't make stupid comments like that. You have zero idea what those girls have been through in their lives. It hurts us when you make asinine assumptions. Even Jesus met with a woman at the well who was a harlot, and he treated her with respect and kindness. I didn't have a clue as to what to wear or how to do makeup or anything like that. Everything I knew or had seen was sexual. Think about it. It was crazy over-the-top sexual for a kid. One cool thing my foster mom would do with whatever I was wearing is she would suggest something to add to it. So one time I came up the stairs and I had a boosty A on, that was the Madonna days, with a jacket on top of it. In my mind, I looked super cute and sexy, right? When she saw me, she didn't jump down my throat about it. She said, oh, that's a cute outfit. And then she suggested adding a t-shirt underneath it. She was brilliant. We can't assume that those girls know any different. And I can tell you one thing, You sitting there judging them and calling them names behind their backs will never show them who Jesus is. There are millions of girls around the world who believe that if a boy notices them or thinks they're pretty or pays attention to them, that it means true love. You and I know that most of the time that's not the case. Women have allowed attention from a man to give them their value. Do you understand that that's why my mother beat me and tried to kill me? Because I had forced her boyfriend in her mind to notice me and to want to do those things to me. I ruined her chance at happiness. She burned me and beat me and starved me and pulled my hair out because of needing a man to make her feel loved. Yeah, sit on that. When I speak to women and girls, I always talk about how each of us need to find our strength and be comfortable and secure in our identity because of Jesus. He created us, he created us right? Just the way he wanted us. I think we forget that. We look in the mirror and we find fault in what we see 
instead of trusting the one who created us and loves us more than anything. We don't value ourselves. We feel something is wrong if we don't have the attention or love of a man. Esther in the Bible is a perfect example of being a beautiful woman, but knowing that her strength and beauty is because of God. Her faith was the most important part of who she was. She loved the king. She was a beautiful woman, but she was whole with or without a man to love her. She was raised by a strong, godly man who affirmed her and taught her who she was to God. So she learned because of that father figure in her life that God truly made her valuable. Therefore, she trusted God completely. So much so that she was willing to potentially die for her faith and love of her people. I love that story. There is something to be said of having a father in your life. Because of sin, many of us didn't have fathers in our lives growing up. I was one of those kids. I never knew my father. But everything I heard about him was horrible. I knew he was a singer with a really smooth voice like Frank Sinatra. And he and my mom played in a band. That's how they met. My mom was a knockout really beautiful girl. She played guitar and she sang like Janis Joplin. So she was a rocker. He was a crooner. So they were in this band and one thing led to another. And my mom was 18 when she got pregnant with me and married my father, who was 10 years older than she was. While she was pregnant, he would beat her and kick her in the stomach, trying to force a miscarriage. Then when I I think I was about two and a half, maybe three years old, my mother came into the house and found my father in bed with my grandmother. Yes, you heard me correctly. My father and her mother were in bed together. My mom was never the same after that. So her mother, who should have known better but didn't do better by her, she then became a mother who should have known better but didn't do better by me. And that is because of crud that nobody would deal with, which then led to sin. So when I say I can truly relate to this person who wrote to me, it's true. Y'all, it's so true. When we, when we refuse to deal with our crud, layers build up and eventually the crud is what comes out when we're walking through hard things. This lady who wrote to me, she needed to deal with her crud. She didn't and that caused major issues in her life. What do I always say? If you don't deal with your crud, your crud will deal with you. Another thought too was counseling is a great option a great option if you're struggling get help contact a counselor and start walking towards healing so you can be free is it hard work the hardest but not as hard as holding on to it and being miserable deal with your crud and let me let me say this right here our spouses are usually one of the biggest casualties of not dealing with our crud they know something isn't right but they don't know what to do i hear it all the time If you are a spouse that is married to someone that has crud, and we all have crud, by the way, and isn't dealing with it, pray, encourage, listen, and share your concerns. And remember, you can't fix it. You can be supportive, but you can't deal with their crud for them. This is so cool, you guys. (laughs) God is in control, and he is pursuing us even when we are trying to run I've said this before, but I don't know why Jesus chooses to use me or any of us really, but I'm so grateful that he does. I make mistakes. I blow it a lot. I'm not a great mom. I'm not a great wife. I'm not even a good friend sometimes. I struggle and I try to be the boss of my own life instead of allowing Jesus to be the king. But in grace and mercy, Jesus forgives me and I'm able to move forward and try to live a life that pleases Jesus. Oh my goodness. And here's something that just, oh my goodness, I just figured this out. This just came in my brain. I am the first one in my family tree that stopped the cycle of abuse. And the entire reason is because of Jesus Christ. Wow. That is like, wow. I mean, you heard my wackadoo family mess. You heard that. You can't make that stuff up. But because Jesus found me and changed me and saved me, I am the first one to stop the cycle of abuse. Y'all, that's cool. That is pretty cool. Oh my goodness. I feel incredibly honored and humbled that Fifty Shades of Grace and Crud Talk is a place where Jesus gets the credit 
and that people are feeling that it's a safe place to share their stories and begin to deal with their crud. Many of you are in the fight of your lives. You're broken and beaten down. You're in a situation that you never thought you'd be in. Some of you are keeping huge secrets, the kind that are slowly killing you, not to mention destroying those around you. Maybe you've been waiting. You've been waiting and waiting for God to answer you. Waiting is not easy for me. The truth is, I don't know why God is not moving on the thing that you are desperate for. I don't know why he makes us wait, why he makes some wait and others get their answer right away. The thing I know is that God is in control. He is fair. He is merciful. And he sees what we can never see, the big picture of truth. He's got a plan, a purpose, and perfect timing. I've got to trust him. Even when I don't want to, y'all, I've got to trust him, and so do you. I can hold my breath, throw myself down on the ground, kicking and screaming, or I can tell Jesus the truth of how I'm feeling, you know, my crud. And I can ask him to help me, to help me trust him, right? I can give up on Jesus and his word, or I can plant my face in the pages of his love story to me and soak up all the love that he has for me and for all of us. It's about choices. When things are hard, what will I choose to do? What will you choose to do? Just know you aren't alone. Number one failure sinner right here. (laughs) You aren't the only one to fall on your face. You aren't the only one who should have known better but didn't do better. There's at least two of us. (laughs) I'm praying for God to give you peace, encouragement, and the courage to deal with your crud. It's never too late while you're still breathing. Do you get that? Deal with your crud. Holding on to it is far more painful than it is to deal with it. We can find all kinds of information at sonybrunner.com. If you have any questions or you want to share your story with me, please write to me. I love to hear from you guys. I'm Sonia Bruner. This is Crud Talk. See you next time.